Hello, and this is Blue Star, Defender of Equestria, and this is the uh, footage I uh, recorded of uh, the John Delance panel at BronyCon 2015. Unfortunately, it is highly unstable, which means that it will probably explode halfway through. <laughs> but I uh, basically I, I had to sort of balance my camera and everything, so it's all shaky and stuff at times. But I hope that you enjoy this uh, anyway. <laughs> Well, you know what? It's fun that there are there is this sort of melding of these two fandoms. Uh, uh, I had somebody tell me, uh, sort of a higher up, uh, as I recall, uh, in the My Little Pony world, um, uh, maybe it was one of the producers or something. He said, um, "You are our uh, what did he say? You are our gateway drug." <laughs> And I said, what, what do you mean? He said, you are the gateway to bring Star Trek fans to us. And I went, oh. Which made me think, perhaps I should be bringing Brony fans to Star Trek. So. Okay, yes. Actually, all I really wanted to do was say thank you for all your work over the years. I watched you with my mother when you were on daytime television, then when you went over to Star Trek and now to My Little Pony. And I just wanted to say thank you for all your work. Thank you very much. Thank you, John Delancey, my Lord and Savior. Yes. Mr. Delancey, I know uh, when you originally did the documentary, there was a little bit of a culture shock when you were reading the emails. And we've been watching your character develop in the show um, and how you can, Discord kind of becomes good and learns that he can do new and better things. What I'm wondering is, because that has influenced all of us, how, is, how have we as a fandom influenced you? How have we changed you, or, or have we? Well, I, I would say that um, you have broken the mold for what I... Um, and and uh, you've broken the mold in terms of what I uh, um, would have anticipated. It never occurred to me that 20-year-old guys would be watching a cartoon for 10-year-old girls. <laughs> okay? Now, no, no, hold on, because I, I, is, and I kept on saying this during the documentary, that people were going, well, you know, there's this. I said, no, 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 this is interesting enough. We need to concentrate on this, because the fact of the matter is, is that there's something here. It says something about our society. It says something about in that zone that we're in. It says something about what our, 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 what our society is giving to certain people and not giving to a lot of others. It's, it's something very interesting in that respect. And, and in, in, I think, very positive. Especially as we're going into, I dare say, what was gonna probably be a brutal presidential election period. Um, um, to recognize that, the, that there are people out there, a lot of people out there, who are highly polarized and, um, and do not have a place in their minds for us. They just don't. And so I love the fact that bronies, what became bronies, could turn and look at something and go, oh my gosh, there's something here in this show that speaks to me and that I can take that and create something else out of it. And, um, and that is what I have learned from this, um, this fandom. Well, stage door to go out into civilian life and there have been you know, one or two or three people there to sign or to ask about the show. Because we don't work, actors don't work as much in live, live anymore. This is the equivalent of that for me. This is, to me, this is, I have finished the show, I've taken off my makeup, taken off my costume, I'm at the stage door, and all of you are here. And you are asking me about something that I've done and telling me whether you like it or don't like it or this worked or that didn't work. And so that has a, a great deal of appeal. Um, I was, um, I was, where was I? I was somewhere in Canada not too long ago and at a convention, 
that was really more of a, of a, um, um, you know, star, uh, sci sci-fi multimedia convention. And it was in a, um, in a hockey rink of all places. And, um, and I was trying to sort of, I was tired and I just needed to get away from everybody for, you know, I just needed 15 minutes. So I said, look, I need to be alone here for, I just, I just need to shut down, just bring the noise level down. And they said, oh, well, we have a little green room. They took me under bleachers and, you know, it was all sort of a little funky and what have you. And I walked into a room that was completely black with a sofa and a chair. And there was a guy there who was looking at his, at his, um, at his uh, uh, phone, reading something on his phone. And I went, Bill, Bill Shatner. <laughs> What the F are you doing here? <laughs> and he said, well, what the F are you doing here? And we sat down and we talked about that. We just said, well, why are we doing this? And it was interesting. His, his reason was the same as mine. He said, I just love talking to the audience. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. Um, my name is Ian Denny. I came all the way from New York just to see you. Oh my God, it's, I'm so nervous right now because you're my favorite character in the show. Um, my question is, um, um, I'm trying to think. Um, I'm a kid on the spectrum, so how did the show actually affect the most kids who are on the spectrum? And I love your character so much. Really. Wait a minute, wait, I'm not quite understanding what your question is. Oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Um, how, how, do ki how does the show affect kids who are on the spectrum? Mm -hmm. um, I, Autism. I, 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 no, I understand that. I don't really know. I'm sorry. I, I don't know, other than, um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm reaching here because I don't watch the kids as they're watching, so I don't have any specific, um, you know, personal experience of that. I, I, I can say this, is that I think that it has given, it is a, it's sort of shelter. Um, the show has offered, in a way, shelter from the world for those kids, as you're saying, who are on the spectrum, <coughs> so that they can be in a place that is not, um, that is ex more accepting, uh, that is not as, you know, uh, I, I say this in a general sort of way, it's just not as noisy. Um, and, um, um, and so it's, it's, it's sanctuary. Thank you. Now, excuse me, I gotta go faint. <laughs> yeah. Good morning, John Delancey. Good morning. If you could guest star in any show, movie or television, past or present, what would it be? You know, um, I have so trained myself over the years not to think that way. Uh, only because it, it doesn't really make any difference to me. Also, you have to understand, I watch almost no television. Um, uh, uh, we have a room in our house which is dedicated to that with a, with, with a beautiful, you know, whatever, a flat screen television in it and it's, it's like a little screening room. I don't know how to turn it on. <laughs> I go like this and then I go like this with the other one and then the other one I go, oh, screw this and I walk out. <laughs> I watch almost everything on my computer, and I watch almost everything streaming, and um, I have argued now for, uh, for many years, why are we paying way too much money for television that we never turn on? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Delancey. My name's Thomas. I'm from Charlottesville, and I'm representing the PBCC Brony Club. I just wanted to ask you, if you could bring, bring on any of your fellow co-stars from anything you've ever done over the years into the show, who would they be? <laughs> uh, 
Uh, well, sure, Bill would be great. Uh, Brian, oh, 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 which show are you talking about? Anything you've ever Anything. done. Anything, you know, um, Brian Cranston is a wonderful <laughs> Uh, I, you know, I've worked with uh, wonderful opera singers that I would bring on. I, I direct, I, I used to direct opera. Uh, there were some wonderful singers. One, uh, I, I'm so impressed with the music that, um, that the show does. Uh, uh, Daniel Ingram, I, I, that was great. Um, so, I don't know, people like that. Tons of, it, it's a show that um, can handle the, uh, the weight of, of a lot of talented people. So, yeah. <laughs> hey, Mr. Delancey. Hey. Um, By I the way, you don't, you, don't, you don't need to call me Mr. Delancey. So, so my lead. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm very happy with that. So keep it informal. Okay. Well, hey, Mr. Lancey. Um, okay. <laughs> um, I just want to say that I love Discord. I love you. I mean, uh, I go on the internet sometimes and I try, I like having a little Discord impersonation in, in a way, like I try to be the harmless comedy, comical person. Um, I just want to know what's it like being the funniest character on the show? Oh. Like the band, uh, well, I don't think of myself as the funniest character on the show. Uh, I'll tell you, uh, my experience of the show, which I'll, I'll just give you a little bit so that you, you understand sort of how it works for me, is that um, I will be sent a script. I, I only do one a year, I think, or something like that, or one a season, whatever it is. Um, I, I look at the script the night before, or t two days before, depending on when I get it, I read it, and then I prepare it. And then I go into a studio, and I, until this last one, I do everything alone. I'm talking to a, uh, I have an engineer, there's an engineer in, uh, on the other side of the glass, there's me, and then I can hear people up in Vancouver talking over the speaker. And, and so it's a very much of a solitary, um, highly focused, and, um, uh, you just, I, uh, uh, non-communicative sort of experience. It's only in conventions here that I get to meet somebody else. I go, oh, oh, you're the person who plays that. Oh, hi, hi, oh, how are you? I'm John, you know, stuff like that. So um, all of that bantery sort of feeling that you have when you see me on the show carrying on with the other characters and what have you is frankly illusionary. <laughs> yes? Um, where do you think your career will take you, like, in the near future? Well, uh, that's a terrific question. Um, I'll tell you where it's going to take me on Sunday. <laughs> uh, on Sunday, I'm flying out very early, right at 4 o'clock in the morning. I'm flying to Las Vegas, and I'm going to be opening a, a game. Uh, those of you, um, um, you this is a pre-announcement. Um, uh, there's a new Star Trek game, which is really interesting. It's called, um, it's called, it's made by Disruptor Beam. They were the ones who did the uh, Game of Thrones uh, mobile game. And it is a Star Trek game in which Q, not R, not P, but Q, uh, uh, has disrupted the universe, and all of the characters in all of the shows of Star Trek, classic, uh, movies, next gen, Voyager, all of them, are all available to the, um, to the player who then can pick and choose sort of like their star team that they want and go off and, um, and, and play the game. Uh, so that's what I'm doing absolutely next. Um, after that, um, I am getting involved uh, in, with, a, with a friend of mine in creating a bunch of animated videos, animations, um, that have to do with science. I, I have, 
I go to science soirees and I have science soirees at my house, which is to bring, I have friends who are part of uh, Caltech and they come over and um, it's really a fun evening. I say this to all of you, you can all do the same thing and that is, is that a particular subject is picked. The last person who came to the house was the person who, um, this young woman um, who handles all of the um, infrared arrays, uh, NASA arrays for tracking asteroids uh, you know, around the Earth. Um, and so we, we come, they come to the house, we have their, they, they give a little talk, we have food and drink, and we talk about it. So those are things in which I'm involved in. Um, in terms of actual jobs that come, that you will see, I told you I just finished a, a, a show where I play, I play the devil. <laughs> um, but most of those shows are in my future and I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know where they're going to come from because I have to audition for them. I auditioned for a couple um, this week. What is it? What day are we? Or are we Friday. So uh, this week I auditioned for a couple of them. There's going to be a new show of Roots, so we'll see if I'm on that. And, and things come that way. I just finished a play uh, and that usually is something that I, I do about every 18 months or so is that I do a play and I don't know when my next one is going to come. So uh, my, 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 what I do is very, uh, is very, um, um, it's, it's sort of unlike what most people, I don't have a regular job. So I'm always looking, I'm always looking and I find projects and I think of them sort of like tasty morsels. <coughs> I don't want to work on something for a long time, uh, but I do want to work on something that's interesting to me. Um, I uh, am involved in a new uh, game also called uh, StarCraft. Um, and, and, uh, so, so that's coming out. Okay, yeah. Hi, um, if you were a pony, what would your cutie mark be? <laughs> Nothing that has come into my head can I speak say. <laughs> so I'm left with almost nothing that I can say to you. I, I, I don't know. What do you think it should be? Ooh. Ooh. I don't, I don't know. It's well, there you have what you would do. It's like, what would you do as a pony besides causing chaos? Which one? Is there a, is there a, is there a mark for chaos? Could be. All right, well, I'll think of that. By, maybe by the end of the, uh, of the weekend, I'll come up with something. Yes? Uh, hi, John. I'm really glad you're here. Hope you're having a good time up there. Uh, my question is, what's your fondest memory from working on the show with the cast and crew? Oh, by the way, you're awesome. <laughs> Best person ever. Um, well, my fondest memory actually comes from these, the, these events. Because, as I said, um, uh, it, it's... Um, you know, I go into record, it's an hour and a half or two of real pound, 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 and then that's the end of it. So I don't think of those as being fondest memories. I had a really enjoyable time not too long ago uh, up in, um, up in, uh, where was it, in Seattle at, at a, um, a brony convention uh, where I got to talk to the two head guys and we, we, re we had this really, um, a fascinating conversation where I want, I kept on asking them, when was it that you figured out that you were, that the audience that you were writing for, because when you write something, you write with an audience in mind, okay? That the audience that you were writing for all of a sudden was no longer just that audience. When, in other words, it had gone from uh, a kid's um, cartoon intended for little girls and gone and had made this quantum jump 
and we were able to come down just to right the place, you know, just that particular moment where I went, oh, wow, oh my God, what's, oh, this is, this is something completely different. And, um, and that was fun. And it took us, a, a, well, you're, you, I think you're, you're adult enough for me to say, uh, it was like three drinks in. <laughs> We were, the three of us were at a bar talking, and then it was a really fun, fascinating conversation. Okay, next. Yes? In your opinion, who is best pony? <laughs> this is a very polarizing question, you understand. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the right thing for me to say is, I am best pony. <laughs> borrowed anything from your sets? <laughs> <laughs> Which sets are you, what sets, you mean any set? Yes, any set. Um, <laughs> no, no, I actually haven't, although I do know a lot of people who have, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I, 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 ha I, I haven't. I, I'm sorry to, I know it would be more fun to say I have, but, but I, I haven't. I mean, uh, are you thinking like of Star Trek stuff and things like that? Because that, that big outfit, all of those big, th those are all costumes I brought from home. <laughs> When my kids did things bad, I usually would dress up like that. <laughs> say, uh, you know, you're on trial. Well, I do know you've stolen all of our hearts. <laughs> oh. Okay. Hello, my liege, Mr. Don Delancey. Hello. <laughs> it is an honor meeting you, and I would like to ask, well, you answered my first question, so I changed it a little bit. Um, how good of friends are you with the rest of the cast on My Little Pony? Well, I'm, I'm, I, I'm friends with them, but I only see them at these events, and we are usually go like, oh, hi, hi, and then somebody's saying, could you autograph? And, yeah, yeah, I know, you know, what are you doing? Where did you come in? You know, stuff like that. So that's about as much. Uh, I think that the people up in Canada are, have a chance to be much more friendly because um, they, first of all, live in, in the same town. They see each other. Uh, presumably, and what usually would happen is that if you're with a, a whole group, you know, you come in, you, you rehearse from, or, or you record from, let's say, 9 to 12, and then invariably if somebody says, oh, well, hey, why don't we go and have lunch or something like that, and then that's how you do that. For me, it's a, it's a different situation. Yeah? First off, I'd like to say that you are awesome, and um, my question is, um, if you have ever met Discord in Akrushia, what would you do to hang out with him? What would I do to hang out with Discord? Yeah. Well, you know what? Um, <laughs> it would be a little bit like hanging out with myself. I <laughs> um, uh, uh, I have brought um, what Lauren wrote or conceived of. I sort of, uh, <coughs> you know, created the third dimension of it. So um, I guess, in a way, I would find sitting across the table at lunch with Discord to be a very trying time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. Uh, Mr. Discord, is it really fun when you play the two tricksters, Q from Star Trek and Discord? Uh, yes, it is fun. It, you know what? Um, and I'm sure your mom and dad are not going to be happy with what I'm going to suggest next. <laughs> um, um, do you want to know how fun it is? Do you want to try it? I'll give you the secret. Just do anything you want. <laughs> yes. Hi. 
Hi. <laughs> I was wondering, out of all the episodes of My Little Pony, which one was your favorite that you've been on? My favorite episode was, I, I love this, this is the new, this is the new way, which I, I see this all the time. There we go. We all talk to each other this way. I talk to my wife in the morning this way. Just, just to make sure that everything is absolutely documented and we can go back. Uh, all right, what was your question again? I'm sorry. Hi. Out of all the episodes that we've seen so far, so not the new one that you were just on, what was your favorite episode that you've been on on My Little Ponies? Well, you know what? I sort of rem the one in which it sticks in my mind is the one that has to do with um, Discord having a friend and then discovering that the friend has a friend. <laughs> I like who I like I like that episode because it is a it, it is a a problem that an eight year old has. It's also a problem that an eighty year old has. <laughs> and I love those type of those type of shows uh, where where the um, where what is being talked about is of a serious nature obviously you know it's it's done in a kind of a crazy wacky you know fun entertaining sort of way but at the core is a real question and that is is that can you bring in new people without feeling jealous about it no. yes so john delancey has playing characters, the chaotic ones like Q from Star Trek or Discord from My Little Pony, and having this kind of popularity around the character, do you believe that that has affected you in your personality and behavior towards others? I'm going to strangle you now. <laughs> Uh, yes and no. I'll tell you where it really has an effect is not when you're doing um, episodic work or movie work even or, or, um, or voiceover work. It, where it has its effect is when you're doing a play. Um, there have been a couple of plays that I've done where the character that I was playing at night actually had an effect on me during the daytime. Um, and um, uh, man, man and Superman was one. Um, uh, one which I've talked about before was a character, a, um, a, a true person. His name was Bebow. He was a uh, he was a f functionary, a, a Nazi, in uh, in the uh, who ran the ghetto of Luj. Um, you get to live. You 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 spend a month preparing, let's say even a month before that it, in rehearsal, so that's two months of preparation, and then you play it for, for uh, weeks, if not months, and that, that begins to seep into you. That way of thinking um, begins to have an effect on you. N frankly, none of the things in which I've done that you would have seen. Although when I was auditioning for Q, I was in a, sh I was, uh, uh, in a play called Terra Nova, and I was playing Amundsen. And Amundsen it was all dressed in black, and he was a, he, Amundsen was the guy who, um, who got to the South Pole first. And it's a very sort of ruthless, um, no-nonsense, highly realistic, powerful character. And um, I ran from rehearsals uh, uh, during my lunchtime to go and audition for Q, so all of that was in me already. And so when I, when I went and auditioned for that, I, I brought, uh, 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 without thinking about it, I brought that into the audition. So we, some, we are affected by these things, but you know, I can't really say that, that um, 
playing for a couple of hours, the character of Discord has changes me. What changes me actually is this event. Th th meeting all of you, and, and as the years will go on, that changes me. I go, oh, wow, I'm, I'm still part of of generations that you know normally I wouldn't I would become get more and more removed from and what have you that's affecting me but not specifically playing this character yeah hello so this is a message from the survey course how do you prepare yourself for any role of you like that you've done what do you do to bring yourself into every character you perform such as you know Star Trek Generations Breaking Bad and My Little Pony well, you, you, said the, you said the operative thing. How do you bring yourself to the character? You, what you do is bring yourself to the character. When I do that is when I do my best work. The, 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 um, um, if there were 10 of us up on stage here, and, um, and they all had, you know, we all had, you know, say, discord lines, um, it would be the person who brought themselves most to the character that we would, we would be attracted to. We, we would understand it because it's, it, it, they become a, a vehicle and they have filtered it as opposed to some artificial notion of it or somebody who would go, who would make the mistake, let's say, of going, well, we have to do it like Delancey did. But Delancey isn't on the stage, you're on the stage. So you, you, you do that. And, and technically what I do is that I look at the material and um, I, I actually try not to, um, I try not to jump ahead, I try not to get into the rhythm of it because every script has a rhythm, there's a musicality. I try not to ride that stuff, I'm, I'm very good in terms of text. I'm very good in terms of, of understanding that musicality. But the issue is, is that I have to make sure that I'm not skipping um, the rock along the surface, that it actually goes in. So for me, what I have to do, and every actor is gonna be a little different, is that I have to read things slowly. I have to, to take the time to go, well, where am I? Where is this taking place? And then who am I? And then what am I doing? And I let that begin to seep in and seep in and seep in. And then I come from the belief uh, that, that there's, a part, there's, a, there's a part of every human there is, is part of us. That's why that playing that character in that, in that um, uh, of that Nazi who was, you know, making sure that people were were take put onto the trains to go to Auschwitz. You can't really, you can't play it from that big histor uh, historical perspective. You have to play it from a much more, you know, we've got to get people on the train, and you know, you know what that's like. We've all done that. We've got to get going. We've got to get. This has to be done. You know, uh, little little bits of, of of dishonesty that begin to move in a certain direction that become your personality. Well, we all have that, and one of the things that's fun about acting is that you get to you get to find that little piece there that you go, oh my God, I, I couldn't I can build on that and and create a whole character about that and be that person who sends people onto a train um, and understand that I could do that. Now, the thing is, is that I'm pretending. I'm pretending. Um, but in the process of pretending, I find out things about myself that I go, oh, that's very interesting. And so that's sort of what the job of an actor is. Um, and so, again, to wrap it up, I, you have to bring yourself to the role. One final part. Uh, you know what? I, I, I only have a few, five minutes here. I'm just a big sign. Yes. Hello, my lead. Ah, uh, hello. Mm -hmm. um, what I would like to ask you is, we know Discord's design in the cartoon, a mismatch of all sorts of different animals to make an embodiment of chaos 
If you had a chance to personalize that design, bringing your own creatures to make discord, would you change him and how? Or would you keep him the same and you think he's perfect as he is? Well, I think he is perfect as he is, that work, who, who works in the world, in, in, in the terrestrial world. Uh, I, I, um, it wouldn't quite make sense as a, in the aquatic world. But I think it would be sort of fun to see that he would have the ability to rechange himself and go into the aquatic world as well. Okay. All right. As a Maryland native, I would just like to say welcome to Baltimore. It's an honor to have you here. Uh, my question is, what is it like working with such, alongside such big stars like Patrick Stewart from Next Generation or Brian Cranston and Aaron Paul from even Breaking Bad? And follow-up question, what's your gentleman's drink of choice? <laughs> My gentleman's drink of choice. Uh, I'm I'm a rye. I like rye. Okay, bourbons, rye. Um, I um, what it does is that it it ups your game. It's like going out and playing tennis uh, with somebody. It, it, you've all experienced this. If you go and play tennis with somebody or any game, and whatever it is, if the person isn't. Um, as good as you are in the game, it's not the same game. But if the person is as good or better than you are, then it ups your game. That's, that's, the, that's what makes those events sort of fun. Okay, yes? It's a uh, honor, John. So you've had a lot of experience, thank you. You've had a lot of experience playing different types of characters, some of them eccentric and goofy, like Discord and Q, but some of them more serious, like your role in Breaking Bad. So is there a type of character with certain, maybe a certain personality that you would like to try to play? Is there a, say the last part? Oh, um, is there a character with maybe a certain personality or, a, well, personality pretty much, that you would like to try to play that you haven't yet? Well, that goes back to what the gentleman over here says. It is a role that you can delve really far into yourself. Um, that's what you're looking for. The reason that the role on Breaking Bad was well received is for two reasons. Very important reasons. And the most important one is this. It was well written. Okay? And because it was well written, all I had to do was, in actor talk, it was either call it get out of the way and let yourself just be the one or take it in and be the one um, uh, and but you cannot do that with material that isn't that isn't good so you're always looking for material that you go oh wow I could really I, I really embrace this I really I could really do something with this. Okay, I'm getting, I'm supposed to wrap things up. So, one more question. Hello. Yes. Um, in the show, are you fr are are you friends with Tree Hugger? Very good friend. <laughs> okay, and you know what? I was supposed what what I was supposed to start at quarter of right, and. But we didn't get started until what time? 11. 11, all right. So unless they come out, uh, let's do a few more questions. Okay, go ahead. Yes, yes, yes. So um, I had asked my boyfriend a question and wanted to know if your answer would agree with his. Um, <laughs> don't worry. If in some plane of existence, Q and Discord were to be walking in different directions and pass by each other. I asked him, what do you think they would say? And my boyfriend said, playing both parts, Q, Q. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> I don't know what they would say. I, I, I honestly don't know. You're far better suited and far better um, schooled, uh, uh, or, or you have uh, uh, to answer that question. Okay. All right. Next. Hello, Discord. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> seems with your recent reformation that chaos in Equestria is at an all-time low now. <laughs> Being that it is, if you could choose an alternate job title, what would it be? Uh, well, you know what? I actually think that, uh, that it, should, it should spin up again in terms of the chaos part. Well, um, one doesn't need to get too nice. And, uh, <laughs> So, um, so I'm hoping I don't have to answer that question in terms of a new uh, job title, because I'm hoping that in the future, and there is a future coming, uh, <laughs> that I'm going to be naughty again. Excellent. How you doing, John? I need you to be perfect. I need you to be perfectly straight with everyone here. On my way in here. I found this on the bottom of my shoe, which I believe is the cutie mark of a certain, part of the cutie mark of a certain pink pony. I need you to be perfectly honest with us. Is your chaos magic slowly taking over this convention? Yes. <laughs> there you have it. Ahoy, my liege. Ahoy. <laughs> Word on the docks be that ye ship Discord and Celestia. We've had a few interesting nights. <laughs> Hello, my ladies. So, I did something called live action role play, and I wanted to know, and this is not my regular, real voice by the way, but I wanted to know, it's very similar to acting, what kind of advice would you have somebody who would like to get into an acting career? Don't. <laughs> Honestly, if you're enjoying yourself the way it is, don't. You can do lots of plays in your community theater, you can have the enjoyment of, of rehearsing and an opening night and the bittersweet feeling of, of a closing night and a party and what have you. But the minute you go professional, it changes the entire complexion. Yes? If you could choose to play another pony in the show, um, who would you choose? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be a pony? <laughs> Who would you have me choose? <laughs> Princess Big Mac. <laughs> Is that a good choice? <laughs> uh, okay. All right, one more. This is the last one. Okay. Okay. Mr. Delancey, I just wanted to say, first of all, thank you for all the work you do on the show and the work you've done towards the fandom. We all appreciate it. And I... I did have a bit of a request, if you don't mind. Um, Discord writes a letter to Princess Celestia. You, you have a request that I write a letter to, is that what you said? That Discord does, since you're here. <laughs> but if you don't want to do that, I did prepare a plan B question. Okay. <laughs> what is your plan B question? My, my, my plan B question is, how has working in live action for you compared to working in animation? Oh, uh... Well, um, it's certainly easier. Animation? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, it's almost no, 
there's almost no comparison how much easier it is. Um, um, uh, I, uh, I created a, a, a company with, I, I, I'm a big audio person. Uh, almost all of my entertainment and my stuff comes from audio. Um, that's why I was saying I don't turn on the TV very often at all. Um, I, I, I know it's going to sound really nerdy, but I, I listen to a tremendous amount of lectures, uh, college lectures that I really enjoy. I listen to a lot of political stuff. Um, um, that's where everything comes in for me at the best. I grew up in a, in a musical environment. My father was a, a musician, so uh, I have a, a big uh, repertoire of classical music in my head. Um, uh, I lost what I was going to say. Um, uh, oh, and I had a company with Leonard Nimoy, and I had a company uh, uh, called Alien Voices where we did where we did uh, classic adaptations of classic science fiction. So um, that's really where I, I rest. And, and f to do that, you have to do a lot of work and what have you, but you don't have to show up on a set with your hair combed <laughs> uh, uh, and, and sit around for you know six, seven hours a de uh, uh, to shoot, you know, a, a 30 second scene. So in, in comparatively, it's a lot, it's, it's very different. However, what you have in live action is that you have your face and your body and your eyes and all of those things to be able to make points and to tell the story in, 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 in work that it has to do with um, with audio work, it's truly only with your voice. So uh, both of them have their challenges, and I really en I enjoy them both. People, thank you so much. I, I, I haven't looked at my schedule. I don't know whether I have another one of these, but I'm just delighted to be here, and I want you to all have a great time. So thank you. Thank you for having me.